So the San Antonio Spurs have a pretty big offseason ahead of them. Two big things are going to end up happening for them this offseason. One is that they have the number four overall pick in the upcoming draft. So they are going to try to continue to stay strong on this rebuilding path, right? Obviously, they had an amazing first year of the Victor Womanyama era. He won Rookie of the Year. Could have been Defensive Player of the Year if the Spurs were slightly better. And also could have been an All-Star if the Spurs were slightly better. But either way, that first year for him was amazing. Just great signs all around. If there's ever any signs of a player showing that could be a future franchise player in their first season, he showed it. Right. So they're just going to try to look to stay on this path, this strong rebuilding developmental path. And part of that is making a great pick at that number four spot. Also, they're going to try to make a move to bring in a veteran. And luckily, there are a lot of great veteran players who could be hitting the free agency market this summer. So what I'm going to do this video is break down a new Bleach Report article where they list the four biggest trade or excuse me, free agency targets for the Spurs to go for this offseason that could help speed up this developmental rebuilding process that they're on. So let's get right into it. The first name that they end up mentioning in this article is none other than Chris Paul. So the idea of Chris Paul playing under Popovich just makes total sense. A high level playmaker, one of the best playmakers in the history of the game of basketball. And he is the purest form of a point guard that Popovich has had since Tony Parker. And also just having a veteran presence, like I said, means a lot for the Spurs. They don't have a player right now that's over the age of 25, right? So they need someone in that locker room who can give them that experience and that'll help them a lot from a developmental standpoint. And also just for the basketball reasons, he still has those playmaking chops, right? He averaged 6.8 assists per game in limited action off the bench last season for the Warriors. So the situation here with his contract with the Warriors is this. They can either waive him or pick up his option. If waived, he would become a free agent. And if that's a situation, which it looks like it may end up being, then the Spurs would have no problem at all paying him to bring him over to the, to the team. Question now is this. How many years do you get out of Chris Paul at this point in his career? He's 39. He'll be 40 by the time next May rolls around, which is about a year from now. Um, so your question is this. How much do you get out of him, right? Is it going to be just a one-year thing, right? We know the Spurs process is going to take a few years. It's going to be a minute until they truly contend, right? So do you just get Chris Paul for one season and then he's out? That's the question. And also on top of that, he hasn't been at his healthiest. Last year, he only played 58 games. And the season before, only played 59. So how many years of Chris Paul do you truly get? So that's the only question, but still there is a ton of upside. Even if you do get him from for just one year, look, maybe he helps develop other playmakers here on the Spurs roster. Maybe they go for a point guard or a good playmaker at that four pick and having a guy like Chris Paul around him would help with his developmental process. Right. And also when Binyama just playing with a point guard like him will just continue to help him from a developmental standpoint. We knew last season he didn't have a great playmaker around him. And it kind of limited him a bit. Even with him being limited, he was still amazing. So imagine him with the playmaking chops of Chris Paul. So we'll see what ends up happening. Again, you're just questioning how much of Chris Paul you truly get. But you're not going to break the bank on him. It's not like you're going to throw out a bad contract to get him. So why not, right? Why not make it work? I think the um, the upside here outweighs some of the negatives associated with bringing him, him here on this roster. So Chris Paul is their first guy they list. And I think this is a pretty solid move. So the next guy they list, I read a lot about this actually over the last couple the weeks is DeMar DeRozan. So I 100% believe that it's time for Chicago to move away from whatever it is that they have going on right now. So for DeRozan, it's time to get out of here, right? It doesn't make much sense for him to return. Chicago seems like a dead end right now, and they just need to go into a different position, and that is rebuilding. Um, The Spurs can definitely pay him a large amount. I feel like offers for him from other teams won't be as substantial because I feel like a lot of people are kind of questioning his value at this point. It's kind of a truth right now for both him and Zach Levine. Um, And on top of that, he's 34, right? So he's still relatively older, but still has a ton of basketball left in him, right? He's not at a point where he's like Chris Paul, where you're worried if he'll retire within the next year or so. No, he's still got a lot of basketball left, still an amazing player, still at a point in his career where he can continue to take over games and be the best player on a team. Uh, he's relatively healthy. So I talked about Chris Paul, the health issue. Issues. Not the thing at all here with DeRozan. He played 79 games last season, 74 the season before, and 76 the season before that. Another thing is he is a solid playmaker. So I know you're thinking, well, DeMar DeRozan, he's usually a score first guy. How does that help Wimbenyama? 
DeRozan is a very underrated playmaker. Again, he's not an elite playmaker, but he can do it, right? He won't be as dynamic as a Chris Paul in that field, but he's a solid enough competent enough playmaker and decision maker and he'll do a lot to elevate that Spurs offense and fit around women Yama and whoever they end up drafting and just having him on the roster automatically adds more wins to this team he's a very experienced scorer um, one of the best mid-range players of all time a multiple time all-star still a guy who can take games over if he has to and that puts the Spurs in a much better position as far as winning which helps the development of their players young players in winning situations makes them better only question is, does this make sense for DeMar at this point in his career? So almost similar to the questions I had for Chris Paul. He does seem to be at a point where he wants to win a title, and he deserves it given his tenure and how things have gone for him individually through the league. And the Spurs won't be in that position for a while. I mentioned it with Chris Paul. They're not going to be contending until like maybe five years down the road from now. But you never know. But I'm not putting money on them being a true title contender anytime soon. So that's the only question for DeRozan. It is a bet. But I think it does make a ton of basketball sense for the Spurs to at least make a big run for him. Whether they get him or not, it would make sense for them to go for him. And also on top of that, he has experience with playing in the Spurs system. He has experience playing for Pop and playing with that Spurs culture. That means a lot with helping develop these young guys. And like I said, just having him here on the team makes them a better team, right? So I'm not saying there'll be a playing tournament team, a playoff team, but they'll just be better. They'll be more competitive. I don't see you adding DeMar DeRozan to your roster and signing him and getting worse. So DeMar DeRozan is another guy they selected, and I'm actually in favor of this. Makes sense for them only question is does it make sense for DeMar DeRozan himself so we'll see about that next guy they list off here is an interesting one and that is D'Angelo Russell so the way things will work here from a contract situation he could opt out of his contract with the Lakers and enter the market here's my thoughts on this yes his numbers were solid for LA last year he averaged 18 points on pretty efficient splits some of the best of his career but I don't know if this really takes Wimby's game or the games of other young players in this roster to the next level. I don't know how much better this makes them as a team. Um, he's had a couple of rough back-to-back -back playoff runs where some of his intangibles were once again in question. Him kind of sitting away from the huddle during the playoffs in that first round for the Lakers just was not a good move or at all. Not a good look for him at all. So just kind of curious about how much of a leader he can be for this team and how much he'll mesh with that Spurs culture. So we'll see, right? Just doesn't seem like the type of veteran presence that they need. For him, though, there is this upside. He's still young. He's only 28 years old. He's not 30 yet. And he's still trying to, I guess, etch out and figure out what type of player he truly is. So growing under Popovich would mean a lot for his career. And maybe he can make himself a part of this developmental process that they have going on, right? And he can be in this thing for a few years as he's just 20 as I mentioned. So maybe for him, the upside with this is developing under Greg Popovich, which is going to help guys a ton because he's arguably the greatest coach of all time. So there is the upside, but I don't think he's the type of veteran that the Spurs need. So I think they should pass on this, right? I'm not a big fan of them making a move for D'Angelo Russell at all, but I don't know, right? It could go both ways, but I'm not feeling too good about it. He's a solid playmaker, but he's not a playmaker to the point where I think it'll take Wimby's game to the next level. And again, I don't know how much better this makes the Spurs as a team relative to bringing in a Chris Paul and especially uh, a DeMar DeRozan. Um, so like I said, I'm just questioning how much of a difference maker D'Lo could truly be for the Spurs and how much he truly elevates what they've got going on. So for this one, I know they listed it. And they have a good explanation for it, but I'd pass on it. And the final name that the Bleach Report article lists off here is none other than Paul George. Coming off a good year with the Clippers, he was very available, played 74 games, had good scoring numbers. He averaged 22 points on 41% shooting from the three-point line. Not as good of a playmaker as Chris Paul, obviously, and not as good of a playmaker as DeMar DeRozan and maybe even D'Lo. So relative to all the guys that's already mentioned here, not as good from a playmaking standpoint, but he's capable of it when he needs to be. Either way, though, like DeRozan with his experience and scoring ability, this makes the Spurs a better team and puts them closer to at least being decent, right? And he's a very mature player. So again, that veteran presence would be there if he comes. He's 34 years old, means a lot for them, still has some mileage left on him for sure. So there's that as far as upside goes. And also just think about how good and entertaining on the offensive end a duo of Victor Womanyama and PG would be, right? It would be insane. But your question here is this. For Paul George, does it make sense? 
to take a pay cut to come here. And also, again, given that he's an all-star player still playing at a high level, would he want to go to a team that's rebuilding? Probably not. So for some of these, you have to look at it from a player's perspective, right? And for as far as looking at it that way, the only two guys that makes sense for would be Chris Paul and D'Angelo Russell. For DeMar DeRozan and Paul George, those guys are still high-quality players, and I feel like they still want to win and win championships. Does it make sense for them to choose to go to a rebuilding situation? Probably not. So the Paul George thing is definitely a long shot, especially with how many actual title contenders are going to make a run at him. But for the Spurs, why not go for him? Like I said, offensively, there's a ton of upside between Paul George and Wimanyama. He's also still a solid defensive player at this point in his career. And like I said, it brings a ton of all-star veteran leadership and perspective to this group, which is super important. So I'm not opposed to it, but I don't see it happening because I don't see Paul George at this point in his career with the teams that are going to be coming after him. I don't see him coming over here uh, with where the Spurs are right now with their developmental process, right? So those are the biggest choices that the Spurs have as far as hunting the free agency market, according to Bleach Report. And out of all of these four guys, I think the best choice is DeRozan. Like I said, his scoring, his experience, and his playmaking would balance out a ton for the Spurs team. I love his ability to close out games as well. Again, would he want to go here? Does this make sense for him? We'll see. But I think he brings a lot of good all-around stuff to the table, both tangible and intangible. So why not make a run at a former San Antonio Spurs? And also, you can sell him on that, right? You used to be here. We really need you here with the situation we're in to try to develop this future superstar and kind of see where it goes from there. So I like the DeRozan idea. Next up, I think the Chris Paul idea is the second best. As far as D'Lo, not a big fan of it at all. And as far as Paul George, I like it, but I really, 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 really don't see it happening. So we'll see what ends up happening here in the offseason for San Antonio, but a lot of really, really good choices here on the free agent market. Even if it's not like one of these bigger name guys, there are going to be some other solid names that are going to be floating out there, right? So again, amazing options here for the Spurs. They're going to have a very productive offseason. Even if they don't get a great free agent, you still have the number four pick in the draft. So you still have an opportunity to continue to stay strong on this rebuilding path after getting off to a strong start last year with Victor Womanyama in his first season.